Hey everyone, whether or not you've seen my other two videos about local large language models, I'll nutshell it for you. The first one was about how that's kind of difficult to get it installed, but it's possible. The second video was more about it's getting slightly less difficult now, and these models are getting much more capable. And in today's video, we're going to explore GPT for all, which is to date the easiest way I've seen it done yet. If you've been holding off and waiting for a project that was going to make this idea much simpler to approach, this may be the one to look at. The focus of GPT for all in the very brief time that I have used it so far is simplicity. They not only made it very easy to install, but very easy to maintain, very easy to download which models you want, and it feels like it automates as much as possible. And while Ubabuga's repository is good and the project idea is sound, the aim of that project is probably going to get to be more complex and more expandable, whereas this one aims to be more simplistic, and it just feels more streamlined. Walking you through the install, if you take a look at the GitHub page, and I'm of course going to have a link in the description below for you, there's links to Discord and various different things. But when you see right here where it says chat client, you can just grab the direct installer. For me, of course, I grab Windows. And in most cases, that's what you're probably going to get too. As a warning for myself, at least with Windows 11, it did pop up that box that gave me a, hey, Windows doesn't know what this is, and I had to choose to run it anyway. But the installer was very straightforward. And at the very end of everything, once the program is officially running, you end up on this screen where you can choose which models you want to download. Because the program itself is really just the interface. And if you want to use this as a chat bot, there's chat models. If you want to use it as something a little bit closer to GPT, then they've got those type of models as well. There's actually a lot of different options here and probably more to come as time goes on. You'll definitely recognize some of these names from some of my other videos. Llama, Alpaca, Vicuna. They've even got Stable Vicuna. And it looks like another feature they added here is it'll save your OpenAI API key. And you can use this program to communicate locally to something like GPT-4. The program does give you a sense of control or at least security. You choose whether or not you want to save your information, whether or not you want to send it to their database for training. The exception, of course, is if you're using GPT because you're sending all of that to their API. So, of course, this program wouldn't really have anything to do with that. Now, for demonstration here, I grabbed two models. I grabbed the chat model and I grabbed their local language model GPT version. I don't have any immediate plans of using the GPT-4 or anything like that, but I do want to play with that a little bit. And at some point, I'm definitely going to want to play with this web server and see what I can do with API access or being able to communicate. I'm hoping I can get my tank bot access to this thing through the web server like I did with the other repository. But I haven't even talked about one of the very best parts of this GPT for all system, which is how it actually is set up to run. I haven't talked about what kind of hardware you need, and it would be very natural for you to assume you need a massive video card here. But this program is designed to run on CPUs, not GPUs, and not in your virtual memory. And as hard as that is to believe, what I've seen so far is showing me that that seems to be the case. So for our purposes while we're testing here, and keep in mind I am recording, but you can see how everything is being used in terms of GPU memory, in terms of my processor. Now keep in mind this is definitely not all of the cores of the processor, but it gives you an idea of temperature changes. So I'm just going to throw random sentences at this thing to just get it talking. And you can see how most of the temperature changes that you're witnessing are going to take place on the CPU side. You're probably not going to see much of a rise here in GPU temperature at all. Uh, you are going to see some RAM usage and you're going to see some CPU usage. And part of that is going to be because I did tweak some of these settings here. But in both cases here, I just turned things up. This machine has 64 gigabytes of RAM, so this warning wasn't really anything to worry about for me. So I cranked this up. And in terms of max length, I've more than doubled this number here, but this system really doesn't seem to struggle. I'm kind of fascinated by how quickly this seems to work, given that everything is running locally. If you're used to seeing the massively long output of GPT-4, then something like this may not be all that impressive. I did see some longer responses using the other model, but still nothing along the lines of maybe like a full page or something like that. But let's see what we can get in maybe terms of like a recipe. Now, as a warning, I'm not a cook, so I'm not going to be sure whether or not this is correct, but let's see how much information we can get and get an idea of what the output looks like. Also, where the resources are being used, keep in mind. But as we use this, again, everything you're seeing here is indicating it's all on the CPU, nothing on the GPU at all. I think we can at least take the opportunity here to compare it directly to GPT-4 and see what the difference is in terms of speed and in terms of output. I don't think anyone's going to be surprised to find out that GPT-4 was a much more thorough response. 
But the difference here is when I asked this question, I probably cost this company hundreds of dollars at least. The amount of machines in a network that had to go to work to get me this answer is incredibly complex. Whereas the response that I'm getting here is running just on my own local computer and I'm not even using a video card at this point. I think it's really exciting seeing these things get more and more accessible and much easier to use. I don't know whether or not this project is going for that same level of expandability as the other project we've talked about. I don't know how quickly or if we'll be able to do things like train LoRa's here or put in extensions or what those types of options are. But I will say that the focus of being easy to use, the focus of being based on the CPU, being accessible to just about everyone and being very understandable, this program nailed it in so many different ways versus the experience that I had figuring out the other install and the other program. And it would seem like as long as this program continues to be carefully curated and cared after and updated, that that experience would be pretty awesome. My only fear is that that may not always be the case. And this program does seem to lack some of that manual fine tuning that you can do with the other program. So I'm not going to be so personally quick to pick one over the other. But I was excited enough about this one that I wanted to share it directly after I saw it. But if you're one of those people that have been limited from trying this by nothing more than your video card, maybe now's your time. At any rate, whatever your situation, I hope this video was helpful to you or entertaining, and I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I appreciate your time. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time.